Number 10. Chillingham Castle is, like the name would suggest, a pretty chilling place to go because it's incredibly haunted. It's in the UK, right up near the England-Scotland border, and is so old that no one actually knows when it was built. But the first major record of its use was when King Edward I of England stayed there in 1298 on his way to battle William Wallace, a Scottish rebel leading a war against the English, at the Battle of Falkirk. There have been hardly any changes to the building too, and has been the center of dozens of battles between England and Scotland. And it was even under siege during the reign of Henry VIII, you know, the king with all the wives. The most famous ghost in the castle is the ghost of a young boy, nicknamed the Radiant Boy. Little was known about the origins of this ghost who would cry out at midnight every night until behind one of the walls the bones of a child was discovered. 20 miles from the Scottish border, far enough in to not be a soft touch. Big castle, strong castle, people left chilling on the Nothing can protect them from what awaits in some rooms at Chillingham. Number 9. The Le Pavilion Hotel in New Orleans, Louisiana is widely known as one of the most haunted hotels in the entire city, which isn't surprising considering New Orleans is one of the oldest cities in the United States. And the hotel is built on the land originally given to Jesuits by the founders of the French colony. More than 200 years ago, this patch of land was known as the bad part of town, grim and full of death. And at one point, a theater in the land burned down in a very mysterious fire. The hotel was originally built in 1889 as the new Hotel de Nichaud and was renamed to the current Le Pavillon in 1970 when the building changed ownership. Apparently the hotel is full of ghosts who died on the land and who were once guests of the hotel themselves, including one incident where a man awoke with a female ghost stroking his hair and saying he belonged to her. So guys, if you guys see anything paranormal, crazy in this video right here, this whole video, let me know, please. Number eight, going from New Orleans to New Mexico, and it's time for a very haunted hotel you can find in Santa Fe. It's the La Fonda Hotel, and you may have heard of it, built officially in 1922 on the remains of other inns and rest houses. For America, Santa Fe is another old place, founded as long ago as 1607 and the inn on this plot of land was one of the first established buildings there. It has a bloody history though, when in 1857, someone was lynched in the backyard and somebody else was shot to death in the lobby in 1867. And a salesman 100 years ago committed suicide by jumping into the well out back. And it's this ghost of a salesman who's the most frequently seen ghost because the dining room is built right where the old whale used to be. Number seven. In Alberta, Canada, you can find one of the Great White North's most prestigious luxury hotels, and also one of the most famous. It's called the Banff Springs Hotel, but has been nicknamed the Castle of the Rockies because of its very distinctive appearance. It's pretty hard to miss. It's also had some of the most famous guests in the world, including Helen Keller, Marilyn Monroe, and even Queen Elizabeth II. Despite its ghostly reputation, the hotel itself consistently denies that there are any spirits on the premises. But that doesn't stop the stories. Two such stories are that at room 873, in which a father murdered his wife and daughter and then killed himself. And after the hauntings began, the room was sealed off by the management. And the most famous story of the ghost bride whose dress was set on fire accidentally when she was climbing a staircase, and she fell and broke her neck and died. There was a, a bride, I believe in 1932, who was coming down these stairs to meet her, her groom at the bottom of the stairs. And as he was waiting, she took a few steps, tripped on her train or something went wrong, and she fell all the way down here and actually died on the stairs. Number 6. Room 19 in the Talbot Hotel found in Storbridge, Northamptonshire, is celebrated as the most haunted hotel room in England. It's also known as the Mary Queen of Scots room, because Mary Queen of Scots stayed there at one point. She was the last true monarch of Scotland while Elizabeth I was Queen of England. And after being locked up for 18 years by Elizabeth, she was found guilty of plotting to kill her and beheaded. Before that, she was forced to abdicate and her son James VI became King of Scotland. But when Elizabeth produced no heirs, because Mary and Elizabeth were cousins, James VI was left heir to the throne of England. And it was under him that England and Scotland unified, making him James VI of Scotland and James I of England. It's said that Mary still haunts the Talbot Hotel and a bunch of other places she was kept locked up.
Number five. Now I already mentioned how Marilyn Monroe herself once stayed at the Banff Springs Hotel, but her actual ghost is said to endlessly roam the halls of Hollywood Roosevelt Hotel, which you'll find right on Hollywood Boulevard in LA. It's still a luxury hotel now, but during its heyday it was frequented by all kinds of movie stars, which also included Clark Gable, the so-called King of Hollywood, and silent movie star Charlie Chaplin. It was even built by the movie stars Douglas Fairbanks and Mary Pickford, so it's really a place by the elite, for the elite. People say that Monroe visits the hotel because it's one of the few places she was happy in her life, and she's looking to recapture this and find some peace after her suicide in 1962. You have this over here. We don't know where they go, and there's a lock on it right there, but the lock is broken, so it doesn't actually, like, it's not actually locked. So then he opened it, and he closed it because it was dark, and then we heard our hey. We heard, like a, like, a voice. Number four. A lot of ghost hunters and parapsychologists will tell you that the presence of spirits is exacerbated by water, like water carries the spiritual energies of ghosts. It's no wonder that the RMS Queen Mary, which is currently permanently docked at Long Beach, California, is said to be incredibly haunted, not to mention its history as a troop ship during the Second World War. She's seen her fair share of battles after being transformed from a luxury liner when the war started, and then there are at least 49 reported deaths associated with the ship including a very grim one where a huge steel door crushed two men to death in different incidents. Perhaps the spookiest story is that of a young girl called Jackie who drowned in one of the pools. Again, that thing about water and spirits, who is still seen and heard throughout the ship. Look, I can, I'm not like moving like the waves, like, look. Look, mom's getting her sea legs. Look, 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 go back and forth, see? You just, <gasps> Number 3. It wouldn't really be a list of haunted hotels if we didn't feature somewhere in Salem, Massachusetts, the town so infamous for witch trials in 1692, one of the largest documented cases of mass hysteria to date. While I'm not going to tell you anything crazy like the hotel is built with the gallows they hanged all the accused from once was, there are still some interesting ghost stories floating around. And of course you can still go see those gallows because they're kept as a memorial. One victim of the witch trials is associated with a hotel, called the Hawthorne Hotel though, that being Bridget Bishop, because she used to own an orchard where the property is built. Guests still claim that they can smell fresh apples in the room. One of the things is, is that um, they said that objects will uh, disappear and then reappear, and particularly keys, so I got an extra set of keys, so I'm gonna keep it right over here. Number two. We already had the most haunted hotel room in England, but getting more specific now, the most haunted hotel room in London. It's room 333 in the Langham Hotel. And am I the only one who thinks it's a pretty creepy coincidence that 333 is half of 666? Uh, probably. Anyway, this place is incredibly haunted, and it was built to look like an Italian palace in 1865. Of course, room 333 isn't the only haunted part of the hotel, it's just the ghost's favorite for some reason. Ghosts like that of a Victorian doctor who murdered his wife and committed suicide while they were honeymooning have been seen there. A German prince who committed suicide has also been seen in that room. And one ghost who really likes shaking the beds, especially the one in room 333. Gonna crack on into the early hours and see what we find. I'm in room 333 in the Langham Hotel, I'm on my own. Are there any spirits with me right now? Can you make a noise? Can you show yourself? Can you do anything? Napoleon III, are you with me right now? Or the ghostly butler? Number one. Number one on our list has to be the Murder Castle. Okay, it's not actually called the Murder Castle. That's just a fun, cute nickname people give it. It was originally called the World's Fair Hotel and was built by the man called H.H. Holmes in Chicago. A con man and a mass murderer who once had a habit of stealing and mutilating corpses and then pretending they were accident victims to get insurance money. People think Holmes and his hotel may have been responsible for as many as 200 individual murders. And it was literally a maze out of a nightmare. Doors locked themselves behind people, there were dead end corridors, and stairways to nowhere. When his victims were killed, they were dropped down chutes into the basement where he dissected them and sold their organs to various medical contacts. And he even had furnaces and acid baths installing down to their disposed of remains. To top it all off, the original caretaker of the hotel committed suicide after Holmes' arrest leaving only the words, I couldn't sleep, in his note. This is the only hotel on this list you can't visit anymore, because in 1895, it was burned down by a mysterious fire, 
and the arsonists were never caught. Holmes is often called America's first serial killer. Also, this sounds a lot like American Horror Story. Mr. Herman Mudgett, better known under the murderous alias Dr. Henry H. Holmes. In his early teens, he began to be f fascinated with death, a fascination that would really never go away. He, he soon left school to perform a couple of jobs, and he was so promptly married and had a son by age 20. I think his lineage still survives today, though I think they're free of any psychopathy.